Hey guys, today we're going to review the brand new Chromecast with Google TV. Now you may have heard of Chromecast before, but this brand new device has a long anticipated feature and that is a physical remote. It also supports 4K and it's pretty affordable. So if you guys don't know what Chromecast is or you don't know what Google TV is, we're gonna go ahead and discuss that more in this video. We're also gonna see what's inside the box, we'll walk through the user interface and see what it offers you. And we're gonna compare it a little bit to the Fire TV. So if you do like videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, enable notifications, and if you want to get lots of great daily deals as well as written reviews, then head over to betterlifereviews.com. All right, let's take a closer look. So what makes this device different? Well, it takes it from being something that's just a casting device where you cast from your phone to the device on your TV to now being a fully integrated product. So something like the Fire TV, for instance. So this product has the physical remote, like we said, and it also has the built-in Google TV, which is the user interface that you use to access and scroll through all of your content. So you actually can go in there and you can view all your videos, your save list, your movies, and it will actually suggest and populate content for you as well to see what you might like. So it's a standalone product. So instead of having to use your phone before, um, maybe you're tied up using it for other things, or maybe you have people in the house that don't have a phone or you just don't wanna use a phone, this here is able to be plugged in, used by itself, standalone, using the controller and the Google TV interface. The Chromecast with Google TV retails for only $50, which in my opinion is a very affordable and attractive price point. Maybe even cheaper than that, if you guys wanna check the links in the description below, that'll give you all the current pricing, sales, as well as help to support the channel. Now it's very comparable to something like the Fire Stick or the Roku Stick, and certainly much cheaper than something like the Nvidia Shield or the Fire TV, while still maintaining a ton of functionality. So what kind of applications does the Chromecast of Google TV support? Well, a lot actually. It supports YouTube, YouTube TV, Netflix, Prime Video, so you can still view your Amazon content, Spotify, Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN, Sling, HBO Max, CBS All Access, Stars, and more. They say you can browse through 700,000 plus movies and TV episodes. So you really do have access to a lot of content. This is built on an Android TV platform, so you have kind of more of an open platform to go ahead and view things. So let's run real quick through what you get in the box, and then we'll get into how to use this product. So inside the box, we have the actual Chromecast with Google TV, of course. Uh, it's this sort of flat, pebbly looking thing, very small, very portable, has a nice sort of texture to it. And uh, this is the white version. It does also come in a bluish color and a pinkish color. I do kind of wish it came in black to match all my current uh, products that I have. However, I guess they're going for more of this kind of modern vibe. Uh, as you can see, like I said, it is very small here. On this end, we do have a singular button, and then we have the USB-C port. This port will connect to the included cable, which is of nice quality, and that other end will connect then to the power brick. So if you're getting the impression here, uh, this device does require power, unlike previous Chromecast devices. It's a little bit more powerful, so we'll have to be plugged in. So from the point here on the HDMI cable uh, where you insert it, to the end of the plug, it is about 64.5 inches. So obviously, uh, if it's further than that from your HDMI plug to your wall outlet, they don't have to use um, some sort of an extension cord or a power strip. We also get a set of batteries that are very uh, white in this case, which is cool. You get a user guide, which is helpful, and you get, of course, the remote included here. So let's walk through the remote a little bit more. Uh, they give some nice uh, instructions here in the guide. So we're gonna have a uh, multi-directional navigation pad. So up, down, left, right. In the middle, we'll have the select button. Then we'll have a back button. And then we'll have a Google Assistant button. So it's very important, of course, to be able to uh, voice activate saying, hey, I wanna watch an episode of The Sopranos. Uh, hey, I wanna watch uh, whatever movie you might like. Um, you can go ahead and just use a Google Assistant to navigate very quickly and easily through the device that way. Then we have some really important TV integration features. Uh, so most importantly here on the side, we have the volume control function. So this is gonna actually program to your TV and you'll have the ability then to control volume up and down using these nice clicky volume buttons. Then we have the uh, home button, which is gonna go to the home of the user interface there. Then we'll have a um, mute button for your TV to mute the sound. You have a integrated YouTube and Netflix button, so you can go directly to those, uh, to YouTube and Netflix from these buttons, which is kind of cool if you use those products a lot, which I do. Then you have a power button for your TV. There's a microphone here in the center, and then they also include a TV input button as well to change the input on your TV. So it's kind of a lot in a small little remote. Um, it's, you know, it's not super high quality, I wouldn't say, but overall it looks to be a very good quality. There's where the batteries go, um, and it's quite small. If we compare that, for instance, to the remote from the Fire TV, this is a little bit of a older generation remote. 
the newer ones have that volume button there. Uh, but you can see that it is smaller, uh, but it has a lot of similar functionality as well, including you know, the voice, the, the channel selector, and that kind of stuff. Um, they take a little bit of a different take here as far as the, the forward and reverse buttons. This has more to this directional pad, uh, but both are certainly functional and work fine. Um, like I said, the new Amazon devices will have the built-in volume up and down function as well. So uh, both good devices. Then in terms of the uh, something like the Fire Stick here, you can see that uh, this product is, you know, roughly the same size as something like a Fire Stick uh, if you include the HDMI adapter. Now, if you don't include that, this can plug directly into an HDMI port if you don't need that adapter. In that case, the uh, Fire Stick is quite a bit shorter, and of course, it's less wide as well. So, not that it probably matters to you that much. I'm not super concerned about how big my devices are, but something to think about. So I'm sure you're wondering how this device actually looks and what it does. So let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface. So this is the user interface for Google TV. You'll see that up there on the left. Uh, first of all, you can search. You can go ahead and um, go in there and use various search options, which of course are going to use uh, Google to search. So you can do things like, what's the weather tomorrow? So we can go ahead and say that. What's the weather tomorrow? It'll be partly cloudy there tomorrow with a high of 76 and a low of 61. So you can say, um, Show me comedy movies. Right, you can see here you have a list of popular comedies. It'll tell you what service they come from, and it will tell you uh, if they're free, you won't see a price below them, and if they cost money, then you'll see a price below them. So it kind of includes um, both things, depending upon what section you're in. If you do want to specify only free or other filters, you can go up here and click only free. This is really nice that it can kind of like break it down that granular, um, or you can choose, you know, things that are in that category that are family oriented. So family comedies. And we'll go ahead and search that again. It does this reasonably quick. I wouldn't say it's super fast, but you got to figure that, you know, it's looking through all this content, sorting it, and then it has to display it in a cool looking way as well. Uh, so you can see here, these are the family comedies you have. Uh, again, it will give you all your stats down there in the bottom. Um, you can see also that in addition to um, telling you what service it comes from, it also gives you that Rotten Tomato score. So that's kind of a very popular score they have now for rating movies and shows and that kind of stuff. It basically says, based on expert opinion, a uh, higher score being better, it's going to tell you kind of how that's been rated. So that will be, you know, subjective to you. You may feel it's better or worse, depending upon that, but it's up to you. So you'll see there, this one costs money, uh, but this one is free because I have Disney Plus and so on and so on. So you can scroll through all that. At the bottom, you can go down here and you can see uh, it'll give you more things to watch. You can go ahead and go into cartoon movies, drama TV shows, basically these are just all the things that they think might be uh, related or things that you would wanna watch. You can go ahead and click on those as well. For instance, free movies, and you can kind of keep going down the rabbit hole here of things you might wanna watch. But let's go ahead and go back to the home screen here. Um, you can then go in, we're in a for you section. So this is gonna be uh, how it kind of uses this intelligence to go ahead and determine what it thinks you might wanna watch. Now this is brand new to me, so I haven't actually watched a whole lot um, on Google TV here yet. So as I kind of do more and more, it will tell me more of what it thinks I like. But it is pulling in all the services that I subscribe to and kind of giving me a list of things. I right, so can go here and look at our individual apps that we have. If you haven't currently signed into those apps, then it will give you options to go ahead and sign in. Some of them are easier than others, depending upon how they have it set up. Um, but you can scroll through them all and uh, you can add or delete these apps or go to see all. And then if you want to um, go ahead and uh, access that directly there, you can. Uh, now this is uh, preloaded. Last time I logged into Netflix, it was a lot slower, but since I've went and already logged into Netflix a second ago, um, it looks like, therefore, it's kind of caching that data and making it very quick for me to log in. Uh, so if I just do that, if I go to something like uh, HBO Max here, go over here, we can see that you can access HBO Max. Uh, so it is pretty awesome. You can access HBO Max and all the content directly on this device here. So you can see that it works great and we have all our content there. So again, you can access here based upon app or you can access based upon the suggestions to you. As we go down here, you'll see more and more suggestions. So these are things that are trending on Google that you know basically are just popular, kind of like most watched or highlighted things they think, they think that you might like. And again, all the same information is there, whether or not it costs you money and what service it's available through. Uh, and then here we go down the, the list things by uh, category uh, or genre. So comedies are here. Uh, if we get on here, action shows, sci-fi movies, Oscar winning movies. Um, now this is interesting here, it's pulling in my YouTube content. So it knows because I signed into Google and it links that through YouTube that I've been watching a lot of mountain bike movies and that's interesting to me. So here it's pulling directly from YouTube into this service, which is something that Fire TV also doesn't do because um, they're not owned by um, Amazon, they're owned by Google, but it will pull in, here's some movies that it thinks I wanna watch or videos rather um, from YouTube. 
So you can kind of scroll through all this, or of course you can go directly to the YouTube app if you want using um, the YouTube icon up top or by pushing the YouTube button directly on the controller, which is pretty cool. So if we go ahead and do that, we'll just go right into YouTube by pushing the button on the controller and it's gonna launch that up. And of course, uh, whatever um, account you were signed into, it's gonna go ahead and access your content. You can see I've been watching some financial stuff, some stuff about bike trainers and all those things. All right, so then below YouTube content, you'll see that um, there are popular movies and shows again. Um, there are some dramedies, I guess that's comedy drama, okay. Uh, fantasy shows, adventure movies, espionage, mysteries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tons of content I think you might like. Now down here is this really important. Um, even when you, add something to your list when you actually sign into it. Like I signed into Hulu already. Um, however, I did not go into my list of services and include, so you can see here it says, your services are saved to your Google account so you can better uh, have recommendations across Google. So even though I did sign into Hulu on this device, um, I didn't check this little thing down here. So now when I go back to the home screen again, it's gonna go ahead and pull in Hulu recommendations um, on this device and change, give me a little more different content now um, where it wouldn't have previously. Okay, so for here, for instance, in the adventure shows, we can see now that as we scroll through, we have Vikings and we have Smallville, which are Hulu programs. So now that I've included that in my list, uh, you can go ahead and uh, just modify those things down here. So if you wanna have certain apps on your TV, but you don't want it to be suggested to you per se on the Google TV home screen, because it's not really like that interesting to you, you can easily modify that there. Going back here again up top, um, then we can get to the next uh, screen here, which is movies. And again, it's just gonna kind of highlight it in a little bit of a different way to you. Um, so of course I have Disney Plus, Coco is very popular, so it's gonna kind of highlight that in big things. Um, that may be sponsored content or something, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but you know, it thinks for some reason that uh, you either want to or should be seeing this information right up top there. So as we go here to movies, you can see that it will show you movies that cost money and movies that don't cost money. Uh, this one here would cost money because I don't have a service that provides that. Uh, Cutthroat City, as we go in here, you'll see um, some information about the movie. It will start kind of playing the trailer and then eventually the trailer will kind of become the whole screen. If you want to go down and view some cast and crew uh, and other information about the movie, you can do that. Uh, and then interestingly up here, if you want to buy the movie, you just click buy. So with the Fire TV, where it's linked to your Amazon account and therefore your Amazon payment options through your Prime account, uh, here it's gonna be linked through your Google account. So whatever you sign in through as your Google YouTube account there, it's gonna pull up your payment information, uh, what you have stored in Google Pay. So here we can choose the definition we want for the movie, standard or high definition, and then it will automatically have your payment information linked there. So um, you can scroll through your payment options and then you click it and that's it. They make it very easy for you to buy things, of course, because uh, it's good for you and it's also good for them. So here, if we want to add this to our watch list, we simply click that and then it will be in our list for us of things we'd like to watch. Uh, and let's see, watched it here. You can click that you watched it uh, and you can give it an up or down rating. Running on Google, uh, comedies, horror movies, adventure movies, again, just kind of various genres about things that you might like. And of course, you can always search by something that you would like to see. So if I wanted to see Batman movies, I would just click the uh, Google icon here, Batman movies. And take a second there and I'll go ahead and bring out Batman movies for me from the various services that I have or ones that I don't have where I can go ahead and purchase that. Back here in the home screen. Uh, so up top again, we can go to shows, shows being like, you know, TV programs, of course. Uh, and then again, it will suggest things to you. Uh, so this is from the Amazon Prime Video, The Boys, stuff from HBO Max, stuff from Netflix, um, all the different things there. And here we have something that I don't currently have. Uh, that's from a Google TV episode. So you can go ahead and purchase that if you want. All right, these are new shows. They kind of, you know, if you're into stuff that's new, you might want to check them out. Uh, again, trending on Google, comedies, action. So very similar to how they do movies. You just go here again and scroll through and see what you might like. But it's cool, again, it gives you all the options there um, from very many, many services there and um, allows you to choose the one that you would like. So moving on here to apps, we can see that we have all the apps available to us that we currently have. You can go to see all. Um, you can down here to search for apps using an old style uh, keyboard there. You can also go ahead and look for apps based upon the category. So entertainment, music video, that kind of stuff and scroll through them. Um, and if you want to, you can also go ahead and uh, use the Google Voice remote here and say Google Play Store, and it should launch into the actual Google Play Store here. And you can also go ahead then and browse through the apps in this way, kind of more like you would just on the phone, which is interesting. All right, going back out of here, 
Uh, you can see that I have a suggestion to me that I download Peloton, so I have that on another device. I'm not actually quite sure where it pulls that in from, um, but I am able to go ahead and install that app if I want, and then access Pel Peloton content on here as well. Um, so pretty much anything you could want will be on here. Title, AccuWeather, I mean, really, <laughs> anything you want pretty much is available here. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you can just scroll through here. This does actually look very similar, I guess, to the Play Store, pretty much identical. So um, you could just say Play Store, or you can go over here to the apps and search through all these many apps, many games. And I imagine as things go on, they're going to go ahead and integrate more games, and they're going to have access um, eventually to the Stadia service, which currently is not available on this device, uh, but should be available next year sometime. Finally, going right here to Library. Uh, we're going to see our watch list. We're going to see movies. This is interesting here. It does include some movies here, uh, which are movies you typically would purchase. Uh, although I do have Disney Plus. But so I'm not sure if I pulled these in through uh, the Prime TV service. However, if I go to Prime TV, uh, these are movies that I own, but these are not all the movies that I own. Finally, go over here to the right, way up top, you'll see that you have um, your kind of your account there if you want to. Um, Go to account settings or whatever, and then uh, you can access here the settings as well. Uh, that's your network settings, your account and sign in, uh, your privacy as far as uses and diagnostics. You can go through there if you want to turn that off. Uh, you can go in here and change how ads are supplied to you. You can block offensive words or put them in the search filter. Uh, here it tells you that it manages your payment methods through Google uh, Wallet. And uh, these are the app permissions. This is interesting here. It's talking about body sensors and that kind of stuff. So we'll see more how that integrates maybe in a future video. Um, then here we can go to display and sound. And you can see display match content. Uh, you can also match dynamic range. Uh, advanced display settings. Uh, so you can allow, um, here you can allow game mode if you want. So that'll be a higher refresh rate. And we have resolution here. Now this is a 4K device, but this TV is only 1080, uh, 60. So it's giving you the highest resolution available. Kind of makes it easy for you. I do have another 4K TV, but not uh, here right now. There are system sounds, sound settings. Uh, and you can use the various things you want there. So let's see, here we have automatic. Um, you can choose to never use surround sound. You can use Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital Plus, uh, unsupported formats currently. Okay, so I guess that depends upon the sound devices you have hooked up to this. And here we have all of our apps. So um, here you can see that you can uninstall updates, you can disable um, and allow various permissions. I guess this is because this is a integrated one. So if I go to HBO Max, for instance, I can go ahead and fully uninstall that if I want. Remotes and accessories, system, date, time, accessibility, etc. The ambient mode, whether or not you want to view your Google Photos or an art gallery or another content. Uh, energy saving features. Uh, this is the cast functions. It says let others control your media. Show a notification on all Android devices connect to Wi-Fi and let them control media casting to this device. That's pretty cool. So you can allow other devices to also cast to this if you choose to do that. All right, here we have remotes and accessories. And finally, um, just talks about help and feedback. All right, so that is the majority of the things that are available here in the user interface of the Chromecast with Google TV. Uh, let's check out here a few more features. Here on the Chromecast with Google TV, I don't see a way it's this time to directly access the screen sharing. If you guys know that, let me know. Uh, but you can go ahead and go to the Google Home app on your device. Of course, you can cast things from the individual apps, uh, like Spotify, Netflix, whatever. Uh, but if you do choose a device here, you can click there. And then here on the left, you can say, cast my screen. And then you just have to agree and say, cast screen and start now. And then it will go ahead and pull up the volume uh, as well. So it's this mirroring. And then it will also show you know, your complete phone screen there as you scroll through on the uh, device. So if you want to cast something from your device or you want to demonstrate something, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So uh, it's slightly different than what you would do on the Fire TV device, which we'll talk about now. Right, so then as far as display mirroring goes in this device, it's slightly different. Instead of being through the Google Home app, you can go here, enable display mirroring. And then I have an Android phone, so it's gonna be a little different. If you have an iPhone, it's probably gonna be harder, I would imagine, to do that because Android's a little bit more open. But you can enable display mirroring. Uh, then I can go ahead and go to Smart View. My Android phone, this is a Samsung Galaxy S20. I pull up uh, this name of this device, which is Chad's second Fire TV. Uh, and then it will go ahead and just launch into my phone like that. So you can view uh, mirroring as well. And as you scroll through, play content, what have you, it will go ahead and uh, pull up that content on your device. All right, so here in Fire TV, you'll notice that it's pretty similar in terms of the layout. It's just slightly different. 
Uh, here on the very left, we had the ability to search just by inputting one of those letters, or you can go ahead and search by holding in the button on the remote, comedies. And in the same way it does with the uh, Chromecast, we'll go ahead and pull up then comedies. Um, and as you go through, you know, you can see the available information there. It will give you a couple of stars and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can watch a trailer, of course, add it to your watch list. And you can, just like you can with um, the Google TV, you can go ahead then and look at more ways to watch. However, here we're just going to have Prime, uh, buy from Amazon, of course. And then you can also um, buy it from Epix and that kind of stuff. So there is some similarity here. Uh, you can pull up in the Hulu app as well. So there definitely is some ability to go outside of the Fire TV and look at some other services as well. Uh, it's just a little bit more focused on the Fire TV experience, which makes sense, right? So as we go here, we're going to see uh, recent things we've watched are in our available apps there. Uh, here are the apps and channels. So kind of similar to what we have on the Google TV as well. Uh, this one here in particular is kind of slow because this is an older device. But um, you know, again, you can view uh, free time in here, which is interesting. So if you have free time, you can see here it pulls up this nice, all this nice kind of child-focused content. Uh, and you can go here and uh, watch all these various programs and uh, watch things that are geared towards kids from various areas. So pretty nice that it definitely is a feature. Uh, however, there's an extra cost through Amazon to have that. You can initially, I think, get a free trial. Uh, you're also going to see a lot of Amazon-focused stuff. So you can see here uh, The Boys, Utopia, all these series, which could also be on the Chromecast as well, but it's just a little bit more brought into focus here uh, through Amazon because, of course, this is you know their, their feature content, right? So another cool thing about Amazon here is that you can subscribe to channels. Like, for instance, I'm subscribed to Outdoor TV Features. Uh, so I have the ability to go ahead and view this on this device by having the channels, which are through the whole Amazon service. So some of those things probably also are available on Chromecast as well. Uh, just here, it's a little different in kind of how they bring it to you. All right, so things that are on now, uh, you can, we have Pluto, which is like a free TV service. You can go ahead and view some stuff in there. And of course, there's an app for that as well. Uh, here you can go through various TV subscription apps, uh, things through IMDB, which is cool. They have a lot of free content actually through IMDB as well. Uh, and then go comedies, female leads. Uh, so all these things, this is kind of laid out slightly differently. Uh, there isn't as much, you know, it isn't quite as pretty as you can see on this current version at least. But that could get updated very easily. It's just, you know, a software user inter interface thing. All right, here we have some sports content, uh, some more live stuff. Live sports, which is nice, might be very appealing to you to have this stuff available. Um, you can add the Prime video channels uh, through NBA League Pass and all these things as well. Here we have your videos. Uh, so, of course, when we go into your videos, uh, it's going to have a watch list. But then it's also going to have um a library of things that you've purchased through um, amazon here so when you do purchase these things it's available on all of your amazon devices uh, we have free section which is great i don't know if this is always there but now they have stuff that's free so they know people want some free content so that's awesome uh, we can view movies on uh, here you can see uh, there's things through amazon imdb free uh, here are some things that you can rent here we have movies tv shows same deal you can access all your apps here through the app screen. And again, they're kind of highlighting content to you there up top of what they think you might like or think's interesting. Uh, you can go here and also into games and view games and you can view categories of apps as well. Um, so it is broken up pretty nicely. There's a lot of games here available as well, which you can go ahead and download and play on your device. And they do have a uh, TV uh, controller as well for the Fire TV. Uh, here you can go into app categories like uh, business communication. It looks very nice, it's well laid out and you can go ahead and uh, kind of get suggestions of what kind of apps you might like there. Then we can go into settings. You have notifications here. Uh, so no new notifications from Amazon. You can view our network settings there. Uh, we can go into display and sound settings. Uh, you can set a screensaver display. You can change your audio settings, uh, enable CEC. Uh, here's you can go also and enable mirror displaying. So obviously, uh, let's see what these are good for. The Amazon Fire TV is great for obviously integrating into Amazon content. It does have the mirroring function. It suggests to you a lot of the Amazon programs if you're into that kind of stuff. You can uh, link to all of your purchases through Amazon as far as TVs, movies, shows, that kind of stuff. They do have access to purchase a lot of TVs and shows through Amazon, of course, um, but it's not quite as open as the uh, Chromecast Google TV experience. There are interesting things too with Google and with Amazon, like for instance, on my Echo Show, I can access YouTube through the browser, but you can't access the YouTube app anymore because they have some kind of a, a spoof there with between uh, a beef between uh, Amazon and uh, Google. Those things are going to happen, I guess, um, anywhere. But the Google experience uh, based on the Android TV does tend to be a little bit more open. Uh, it's going to integrate uh, all that content in a very specific way. Like you can turn on and turn off the different things that you like. Uh, and it's going to have a pretty, um, I'd say like that's like a AI or um, experience kind of there where it's going to... Um, 
knows a lot about you, which is kind of scary, I guess, but it's gonna go ahead and really uh, run a lot of that through an engine there, pull all the different programs that you have into one spot and suggest to you what it thinks you might like. Um, and then of course, the controller itself, it's nice that they have the YouTube and the Netflix buttons on there. You have the uh, input and that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit more open as well in terms of that. They both have navigation functions. They both have screen mirroring. They both have the ability to control your TV's volume and that kind of stuff as well. Also uh, pretty similar in terms of the remote, the Fire Stick, the more, the kind of the nicer one, the 4K one, and the Google TV with Chromecast, which also is 4K. So they're both 4K devices as well. Um, so screen content um, should be similar in clarity and that kind of stuff as well. Uh, they both will work with pretty much any TV. So it really comes down to kind of to your peripheral preference. I would say that I do think the, Google, uh, the Chromecast with Google TV is a little bit nicer. If you use YouTube, if you use YouTube TV, it's gonna integrate really, really well into the um, that Chromecast experience there without having to actually launch a separate app. It's just gonna integrate super well into the Chromecast device. The Netflix button being there, having the Google Voice uh, function, um, and then just the ability again to uh, purchase things like movies and other kind of content from a wide variety of sources. Just a little bit easier, I would say, on the Chromecast with Google TV. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and that it helped you to make a better purchasing decision. If you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.